Hey guys, welcome back to a new game tutorial series in Unreal Engine. And from this video, we are going to start making an endless runner game where the whole environment will be procedurally generated at runtime. You are going to learn a lot of things throughout this whole game tutorial series as we are going to work on smooth character movement just like any other endless runner game, then platforms and obstacle spawning system, not just completely random but pattern wise, then a procedurally generated side environment and a lot of other things. It is going to be beginner friendly tutorials so stay tuned till the last video and then you will have your very own endless runner game which you can publish anywhere you want and you can also download this whole project from our patreon so you don't have to make the whole game yourself so do not forget to check that out the link is in the description so for that you can use any of the unreal engine 5 versions you have like i'm gonna go with 5.6 so let's launch the engine Alright so here we are gonna start with a third person template since it comes with a lot of stuff we can use and from here you can select your project location. Now for this project we are gonna make logic with blueprints. The target platform will be desktop as of now and set the quality preset to maximum and we don't really need a variant for this project. So now let's just give name to this project. I'm gonna call this endless runner. Now first of all I'm just gonna go in the project settings and turn off the lumen since it's really heavy on my computer. And also in the editor preference I'm gonna set the window default open location to main window. Now it's better I guess. Alright so now if you hit this play button, here you'll see we have this default player which we can move around and play with which feels pretty nice already. And to make an endless runner game out of this, we can use some asset packs from marketplace so that we don't have to design 3D models by our own. You can even do that if you want to. But I think most of you are just beginners so you can use some free asset packs. Those are available in the marketplace already. So let's open up your epic game launcher and here you'll see this fab marketplace. So here let's search for the road and extra buildings. Uh, here it is. This is a free asset pack that contains different kinds of roads and other assets that we can use for our endless runner game. So let's add to the project. And hey, if you don't see your endless runner project, click on this show all project. Here it is. But this isn't compatible for 5.6. So from here, we can select close this Unreal version that we have installed and this asset pack is compatible with. In my case, I have 5.5. So let's select this and click OK. Now the asset pack must be inside your project. So let's go back to your project and in your content browser, here you'll see this low poly city folder. If you go inside this and select mesh folder, you'll see all these 3D models, those which came with this asset pack, like different kind of roads and buildings. Now as of now, I'm gonna use this SM Combine 54 staring mesh to make a placeholder road out of it. So let's copy it and let's go out and here let's create a new folder let's name this assets and this is where we are going to keep all our assets that we are going to use in this project inside this let's make one more folder name this floor and here i'm going to paste it let me call this road 1 sm now if i place it into the level here you'll see this is a plain static mesh with a gray material and you can scale this to make it look like a road but more of that later on First we either have to delete all these blocks and meshes that are in this level or you can create a new level. I'm just going to delete all these blocks from the level since we don't need them. So in your world outliner, here you can see there's a folder called playground which contains all these blocks inside it. So just select all the actors inside this folder and delete them. There you go. And now we are going to place this road mesh and let's keep it at the center of the world. Means set all the location axis to zero. So this is the center of the world and this is from where we are going to start building our road. But first we need to edit this pivot and shift it at the starting point of this mesh. This is because we are going to spawn multiple roads at runtime, time and these mesh can have overlapping issues if they don't have a correct pivot point. So to edit the pivot let's switch to modeling mode and here in the X form click on edit pivot. Now you can shift this pivot wherever you want. I'm gonna keep it just at the edge. And when you're done, click on accept. And now whenever you will place this asset in the world, the pivot point remains the same. All right, so now let's create a new folder. Let's name this blueprints. And this is where we are going to keep most of our blueprint classes. Now inside this, let's create one more folder, name this floor. And here let's right click and let's create a blueprint class. 
it is going to be a actor let's name this floor bp and open it up so here you go this is the viewport and this is the event graph where we are going to write all the logics related to our floor blueprint and here in the components we don't have anything here yet so first we are going to add a starting mesh let's call this floor mesh now from here let's select the road 1 sm which we created before here you go and we are going to scale it a little bit so that our character can pretty much run on it to be precise i'm going to scale it to 6.35 in the x scale and 1.6 in the y scale now make sure to make the path wide enough so that the player can jump on the three lanes now let's compile and in the level let's delete this starting mesh and replace it with the floor bp instead and also make sure to keep the location at center let's place the play start a little forward in the path so the player will have a proper ground beneath him so now let's play and test as you can see a player can move around this path without any issue and the path scale also looks fine all right so now what we want to do is we want to keep adding paths in front of the previous one at front time somewhat like this but for that we must know the ending location of the path means the exact point from where the next path must be attached so to get that let's go back to your floor bp and to get the location of the attach point let's add a arrow component let's name this attach point and we are going to place it just at the end of the path from where the next path must be attached this component will help us to get the location of the exact location where we need to spawn the new path you can see it over here also now if you don't have a world settings window you can search it from here there it is and in your world settings make sure you have this game mode let's browse to it and here it is in the content browser you can also make a new one by right click and in blueprint classes from here you can select game mode base but we already have one here and do not forget to select your game mode in the world settings now inside the game mode we are going to write all the logics about what is happening in the level like spawning floor obstacle coins and all those stuff and game mode is the most reliable class to do stuff like this because it persists the whole level even if your character dies so let's right click and create a custom event let's name this add new floor now we will use this event to add new floor in the level and to do that search for spawn actor from class here it is and in the class search for floor pp which is this one now to spawn this actor it needs a spawn transform so right click and split the structure here you will see the transform is the combination of location rotation and scale so how we going to give it that so if you remember we have this attach point component which we created before and that's what we are going to use to get the transform but before that get a event begin play which triggers at the very starting of the level then we are going to get actor of class this node searches for the instance of a particular actor class in the level in our case we want to get this floor bp so in the actor class select floor bp and when we get the floor bp we are going to get the attach point component from inside it which is this arrow and as i told you we are going to get the world transform of this attach point which we will be using to give the position to the new floor bp we are going to spawn so for that first let's store this transform into a variable and i'm going to call this new floor spawn position all right so once we get the spawn position for the next floor then we are going to add a new floor so here just call this event and here do not forget to use this position to spawn the next floor just right click split the structure and we just need the location and rotation to spawn a new floor although this will just spawn only one floor let's play and here you can see it actually added a new floor now instead of calling this event only one time we can use a for loop and call this as many time we want let's say we want to call this eight times Now this for loop will call this event till the last index. Now since we are setting this position variable only one time, we need to update it every time we spawn a new floor. So for that first let's store our floor blueprint into a variable. Let's call this floor pp. Now get its attach point component, then get world transform and then set the new spawning position. So the floor spawning position will keep updating as we keep adding the new floors. Now let's play and test this. 
So as you can see, we have 8 new floors added in our level. But still this path isn't endless. Like if we keep running, we will eventually come to the end. But we want to keep adding new floors and removing the previous one as we keep running. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. So for that, come to your floor blueprint and here let's add a box collision component. I'm going to call this destroy box. Now scale this box a little bit according to your path and place the box in the forward direction at a little distance from the path. Now the whole purpose of this collision box is when the player will overlap with it, it will add a new floor in the level and destroy the previous one. So right click on this component and from here add an event begin overlap. Now when anything will overlap with this box, it will trigger this event. So first we wanna check if that overlapped actor is a player character. So get player character, then get a branch, and if it is true, only then we are going to execute the further code. And the thing we wanna do is, we want to call this add new flow event from the game mode. So for that we can cast to our game mode, which is our third person game mode, and from here we can call that event. That's the easiest way to do it. And for the reference, we can get game mode and plug it here. And this will just work fine and we'll add a new flow. And then we are going to destroy actor where the target is going to be self. Means as we overlap with the box, we are going to destroy this floor itself, which will be our previous floor. But here the casting will be a little expensive for the game performance since we are going to add flow countless numbers of time. And there is a better way of communicating between blueprints and that is using blueprint interface. So in your content browser, let's create a new folder. Let's call this BP interfaces. Here we are going to keep all our blueprint interface classes. Now to create one, right click in the blueprints, here select the blueprint interface. Let's call this game mode BP interface. Open this up and here let's name this event add new floor. Compile it. Now to use this interface to replace with this event, go to your class settings and right here add a new blueprint interface select the interface we just created here you go now we can use any of the events defined in this blueprint interface here inside our game mode uh, compile it first and then we can define this event just search for event add new floor just like this and it will work just like any other custom event but the main advantage of using blueprint interface is that I can call its event anywhere without any hard reference as you can see and we don't even need to cast to a game mode to call this event we just need to give it any valid indirect reference of that class so now we can add new floor without affecting much performance so now let's play and test this now if we keep running, we will eventually hit that destroy box which is going to remove the previous path and add a new floor. And the cycle will keep repeating again and again, creating an endless path. So that is it for this part of this tutorial series. If you really like this video, you can support me on Patreon where you can get all the project files I've ever created for these tutorial videos. The link is in the description. And you can also join my Discord server where you can interact with other developers of this community. And if this video really helped you out, you can like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I wanna thanks the Patreon members of this month. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. Alright, till then see you. Bye bye.